Hello, welcome to Liberty Nations LNTV. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. And today I'm joined by Cal Thomas, one of the leading lights of the American conservative movement and a prolific author of both books and articles. His latest book being America's Expiration Date, The Fall of Empires and Superpowers, and The Future of the United States. Welcome, Cal. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you, Mark. Always good to be with you. Now, Cal, you recently wrote a fantastic article on the paradoxes of uh, open borders versus closed for COVID, uh, examining why we have so many countries all over the world, they're shutting down entry to, to combat the coronavirus. Uh, yet in the United States southern border, it's, uh, it's a situation of come one, come all. Now, how are the politicians squaring this particular circle? Well, the hypocrisy in all of this, Mark, is just amazing, even to somebody like me who's been around Washington and politics for most of my professional life. Just uh, four or five years ago, you had Hillary Clinton, you had Joe Biden uh, railing against this uncontrolled immigration, warning children not to come, don't let their par parents not to send their children because they'll be turned back. Now, all of a sudden, it's open borders again. Th this is, you know, let let's compare this to a uh, glass of wine. You like good wine, so do I. You have some right there, thank you. Now, if you took that glass of wine and you started pouring water into it, number one, it would dilute the wine. And if you poured the water long enough, it would replace the wine. No country can survive if it does not control its borders. There is no right to come to the United States any more than there's any right for me to go to the UK. In Ireland right now, they are charging citizens 2,000 euro to leave the country. Now, now, you know, internalize that for a moment. Never mind the shutdown that you can't get in. If you want to leave Ireland, it's going to cost you 2,000 euro. But in the United States, we have this increasingly open southern border, and we're getting a tsunami, a flood tide of immigrants, including people wearing Joe Biden t-shirts. Now, my question is, where did they get those and who paid for them? Or, or as uh, Donald Trump might say, who built the cages? Who, who made the T-shirts, Joe? <laughs> That's the other thing, Mark. You know, during the Trump administration, liberal Democrats were accusing uh, Trump of maintaining cages. And now all of a sudden, they're not cages, they're resettlement centers. Well, you got the same kind of thing going on, but they call it by a different name. It's sort of like a man who thinks he's a woman. It's, uh, th there's, uh, I believe there's a massive overflow in these, uh, these children containment centers at the moment, which uh, was expected by absolutely everybody except the Biden administration, apparently. Well, I think they invited it. I, I think they invited it. I think they want future Democrat voters. They want to add the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico as uh, 51st and 52nd states to maintain a permanent majority. Uh, this is about diluting who we are. Uh, you, you can't have a country if you don't control the borders. Now we want talented people. We want people to come in and have jobs and contribute to America. But we don't want this massive influx that's going to overwhelm our schools, overwhelm our hospitals. Uh, over 180 now have been tested positive for COVID and they're being sent not only into Texas, but to the state of Kansas and Virginia. You talk about spreaders and that's the only 180 that have been found positive. There are so many they can't test them all. This is a crazy policy. And that, that actually brings me uh, quite nicely onto my second question. There's uh, a recent uh, White House briefing with uh, Press Secretary Jem Psaki, and she said that the, the current administration would not be taking advice from President Trump on immigration and border security. She said, uh, specifically, she said that his border policies were ineffective. Uh. Now that that, that word stuck with me, it really did. Because um, as you wrote in your article prior to Biden's November win, um, wasn't Trump's policy the very model of efficiency and effectiveness for controlling the borders? Yes, of course, it worked. And that's one of the things that the, uh, the left and the Democrats uh, were so fearful about. They want open borders. They want future Democrat uh, voters. And uh, that, comment by Jen Psaki is just ludicrous. I mean, it's like uh, saying, well, let's see, I had a burglar alarm on my house for years, but the new owners uh, who just bought the house decided to get rid of the burglar alarm because they didn't think it would make any difference on uh, breaking and entering. And then when it did, you blame the previous owner of the house for having the burglar alarm. It makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, that, that actually brings me very nicely into the thing. Uh, you're talking about uh, 
future Democrat voters. And it seems no coincidence that the, the Biden's proposed pathway to citizenship, it lasts, I think it's uh, up to eight years, which is almost just in time for when traditionally uh, the country has had enough of the present crop and then is ready to give the, the other guys their shot again. Uh, it's almost like the, the Democrats are, are hoping to squirrel away favors in form of a uh, grateful would-be future voters to ensure long-term power. Your well, thoughts? Just to, you know, just to imagine this, Mark, I mean, uh, the first act of a future citizen of the United States is to break the laws of the United States. And we reward them for their law breaking by giving them all the benefits of US citizenship. What other country does this? None that I'm aware of. I mean, even Angela Merkel, who had an open border policy for a long time in Germany, allowing a lot of sub-Saharan uh, sub uh, immigrants to come in, and then uh, followed by a number of terrorist acts, has uh, rethought her position on this. This isn't about racism. It's not about xenophobia. It's not about super nationalism. Uh, we have a country of the United States. Other countries have countries because people have fought and died to preserve uh, what is unique to their country. Now, we want other people to come in, but we don't want them to be hyphenated Americans. We want them to be fully Americans. That was the history of immigration in the early 20th, 20th century. People wanted to come here and raise their children to become fully Americans, learn English, uh, respect the Constitution, and all of these other values that created the United States in the first place. Now the left wants to dilute America and make it something uh, other than it was intended to be. And if we don't control our borders, we're going to allow other people to redefine this country to, I think, our detriment. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I, think um, I mean, the United States is rather unique in that it's a, a country formed not of uh, one people or um, what one genetic group. It, it's, uh, it's formed on an idea, an idea of liberty um, that is enshrined within the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. Um, and I, I think an area that uh, a lot of, let's say people on the political left um, try to use as a, a battering ram against people on the political right is that um, they seem to say that uh, certain groups in the country don't want other groups to come in because of their their skin color. But I think the reality is more so that, that there's a certain uh, wish for people of a similar mindset in terms of uh, the Constitution is something that I want to live under. The, the Constitution is something that I respect as a document and as a way of life. Uh, and I, I feel that, uh, that the two things are often conflated uh, yeah. it's, a bit, it's a bit of a shame. Well, um, you know, a liberal is a liberal is a liberal, Mark. And, mm. and, and when you talk about skin color, you know, the left never uh, speaks well of Clarence Thomas, a justice on the Supreme Court. Thomas Sowell, one of the great uh, intellects of our day, who happens to be African-American and probably wouldn't identify himself that way. Shelby Steele, if you're a conservative black person, if you're a conservative Hispanic person, person. If you're a conservative, any person, then you are put in a separate category. You're censored, you're ignored, uh, you're, uh, you're attacked. So it's not really about color and it's not about gender. You know, now we have in America uh, Women's Month. We just had Black History Month, but the Black History Month ignored the conservative African-Americans, just as Women's History Month is ignoring accomplished conservative women. So it's really not about race or gender. It's all about politics dressed up in a different suit of clothes or a dress or a race. Yeah, um, I, I very much see your point there, Cal. The, I, I think that the last question on this segment is um, coming back to the paradox of uh, open borders versus closed for, for everything else. Um, there's got to be a middle ground somewhere, Cal. That there has to be something that could appeal to both the uh, the more progressive left and the, the conservative uh, right. Well, I'm not, sure that middle that. Path? I'm not sure about that. You know, as, as you were asking the question, I'm thinking about open borders. Canada has a closed border. You can't get into Canada, not legally anyway. You can't fly into Toronto or Montreal or Quebec. You can't drive over the border into Canada. It's closed to citizens of the United States or anybody else. 
Only the, the border with Mexico is open. I'm not sure these, as you say, the progressive left is going to agree to anything. They see themselves now uh, having a great opportunity with Biden in the White House, a small majority in the House of Representatives, and a very, very thin majority, 50-50, with Kamala Harris casting any tie-breaking vote in the Senate. So this is their moment. And this is the thing about Democrats. When Democrats get power, they use it. When Republicans gain power, they're more concerned with the editorial page uh, verdicts of the New York Times and the Washington Post and what Democrats are saying about them. You can't, you can't, there's no point of winning an election if you don't use the power that comes with it. So I'm not sure that, you know, we, you talk about a middle ground. Well, how about just obeying the laws? We have uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of immigration laws. Anybody who wants to come to the United States, there's a process to do it. And if you want to become a citizen, there's a process to do that. This is not the process. Violating our laws is not good. And if Congress wants to change immigration laws and make them open borders, then they can do that. But they're not going to do it because they know it would kill their election chances. So instead, they just have a, uh, an effective, in effect, uh, open border policy. And that's not good for the country, any country. Cal Thomas, thank you ever so much. Always a pleasure, Mark. And that's it for this edition of Liberty Nation TV. Remember to hit Liberty Nation News for original articles, the Uprising and Rabbit Hole podcast, and our signature television program, The Conservative Five. Just go to LibertyNation.com on your browser or hit Rumble, YouTube, or check out Liberty Nation News Roku channel. I'm Mark Angelis. Thanks for watching. This is a production of LibertyNation.com, conservative news where truth matters. Who are we? We are Americans that believe in liberty. We are a project of the nonprofit, one generation away. We are patriots who apply the founding principles to the issues of today. And they keep moving the goalposts on us. We are educators and commentators who love America and the Constitution. Who are we? We are Liberty Nation.